Wait, remember The Replacements? It was a Disney Channel original animated TV series that aired on the flagship Disney Channel from July 28, 2006 to March 30th, 2009. It ran for two seasons. Disney Plus only has one of the seasons. Why? Regardless, today for our Wait, Remember series, we are going to take a look into what this show was, some interesting info about it, and what ultimately happened to it, and of course, my personal thoughts on it as well. So let's just hope that I don't get replaced. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. Yep. Mm, I understand. All right, some company just called me. Apparently, I have to go to a thing now. Hi, it's me, Nerdstalgic. Jordan had to, uh, like he said, do a thing, I guess, and now I'm here. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Uh, I guess play the intro thingy, I guess? That was weird, but you know what else is weird? The amount of times I say weird. Also, the replacements. Not shown, but explained at the beginning of each episode in the theme song is the overall concept of the series. That two siblings, Todd and Riley, were living in an orphanage until one day they stumbled across a Fleemco comic book, which had an ad for the Fleemco phone. After mailing away their order, along with $1.98, the two kids received their Fleemco phone, which allowed them to call the Fleemco company to replace any person at all that they want with someone else. Now a word from our sponsor. If there is one thing I would replace, it would be the way I do banking. Thanks so much to today's sponsor, Albert. Managing our finances can be extremely stressful, but with Albert's team of financial experts, they take a look at your personal situation and help make you a plan and are there to help you with any questions along the way. I mean, they are literally called geniuses. Traditional banking can be annoying. Overdraft fees, long wait times on the phone to speak with someone other than a robot, and no benefits like cash back on debit card purchases. It makes you feel like you're not in control of your life sometimes. Albert, however, is completely different from any bank account you've ever used. First up, it's completely free to sign up and very easy to use. Literally, Albert helps you start saving automatically. Instead of having a regular savings account and hoping you remember to toss in some money in there, Albert looks at your income and expenses to see what money you can save and automatically moves the money into your savings account, even if it's only a few dollars at a time. Albert works within your budget to help you get ahead. And before you know it, you'll be surprised how much that can add up to in your savings. What about cash back? Well, uh, of course. 5 to 20% cash back instantly in your account when shopping at places like McDonald's, Starbucks, Walmart, and the list goes on. No overdraft fees, and even better, Albert will spot you up to $250 whenever you need it. When your next paycheck comes in, you pay it back with no interest whatsoever. The list of great things Albert does goes on and on, so click the link in the description box to download the Albert app today. On top of all this, right now for a limited time when you open an account, and connect a qualifying direct deposit, you'll just get $150. So a big thank you again to Albert for sponsoring today's video. Also explained in the theme song, but not shown in the series, is that Riley and Todd, immediately after getting the Fleemco phone, used it to get a British secret agent mom named Agent K and a professional daredevil dad named Dick Daring. This does suddenly bring into question, if Todd and Riley were orphans, who did Agent K and Dick replace? Were their birth parents out there the entire time and Todd and Riley got them replaced with two people who actually cared about them? This is wild, right? Also, are Dick Daring and Agent K in love? They were suddenly assigned together to be two random kids' parents? Like, what's their relationship like? Is this an emotionally functional household? Okay, I'm done questioning these plot holes, back to discussing the actual show. And a lot of these plot holes were kind of be discussed later in the show anyway. Todd Daring is an 11-year-old who is mischievous, lazy, and self-centered. He loves playing video games and hates school. You know, like stereotypical 11-year-old kids do in cartoons. Throughout the series, he uses the Fleemco phone mostly for selfish purposes, calling in replacements that solely benefit him or his friends. Riley Daring is the 13-year-old older sister of Todd who is more mature and more caring than her brother. Riley is a bit of an overachiever, engaging in numerous extracurricular activities including everything from Hornet Hive Scouts to baseball. Compared to Todd, Riley normally uses her phone to replace mean or unfair adults in their lives. Despite her normally good intentions, Riley does occasionally use the phone for selfish purposes as well. Their replacement mother, Karen, Agent K. Daring, is a super spy from Britain, who is habitually either running off on a mission or taking care of house missions, i.e. chores. She is always there to give advice to her adopted children, and is fully committed to being the best mom that she can be. With that said, she is canonically a terrible cook. Saving the world? No biggie! 
cooking some chicken nuggies, that's another story. Richard Dick Daring, Todd and Riley's replacement father, is a world daredevil and semi-professional stunt artist. Dick is committed to the daredevil lifestyle, spending much of the series planning and or performing new tricks. While mildly immature and reckless, Dick is shown to care greatly about his family. It should also be noted that in several episodes, instead of seemingly being randomly put together by Flameco, Dick and Agent K do seem to deeply care about each other, so plot holes aside, the love may be real. Who will it be next? The replacements is all new, right here on Disney Channel. Put down that phone. We're back with the replacements on Disney Channel. The last member of the Daring family is the family car, and bear with me, this makes sense in a second, named Carter, but nicknamed Car. The family car is a high-tech spy car with a British accent with an advanced intelligence and numerous gadgets who will do just about anything for the family, as long as the person it's for isn't Dick. Car's concept was strongly modeled after Kit from Knight Rider and plays into 2001 A Space Odyssey's HAL tropes. The replacements was created by Dan Santat, an American American children's book author and illustrator. Santat was born to Thai parents in Brooklyn before moving to California at the age of three, where he still lives today. He initially attended the University of California, San Diego, where he got a bachelor's degree in microbiology. Unsatisfied with this choice, Santat decided to go back to get an education in illustration from the Art Center of College Design, a decision that really helped him find his true calling. In 2004, he published his first children's book, The Guild of Geniuses, and he later did other illustration jobs, such as the illustrator for R.A. Spratt's book, Manny Piggins, in the first book in Rail Perlman's Auto Undercover series. In 2015, he won the Caldecott Medal for distinguished illustrations for his book, The Adventures of Beagle, The Unimaginary Friend. Santat originally came up with the concept for the replacements as a children's book idea, but after thinking about it for a while, he decided that it would function best as a TV show, and thus he decided to pitch it to Disney. Santat found the experience of working for a large company like Disney new and challenging, with a steep learning curve when it comes to figuring out how to appease several high ranking executives at once while still trying to tell the story he was interested in telling. When the replacements ended, he decided that while he learned a lot from his time at Disney, he greatly prefers the greater freedom that comes with illustrating for books and commercials and decided to refocus his efforts on that. As of 2020, Santat has provided the illustrations for over 60 books during his career. Back to the replacements though, every episode follows a basic formula. Riley and Todd are living their lives. They run into some adult who causes some sort of problem for them, then one or both of the two kids call Flimco using the Flimco phone with a request to replace the adult or adults, with some other specific type of person. The episodes then normally end with Todd and Riley realizing some sort of lesson about appreciating what they had had before, and they ask for the replacement to be reversed. They are re-replacing the replacement, or are they un are they unreplacing the repl- Who's repl- Are they were double replacing? Is it a triple replacement? During the end credits of each episode, a character from the show endorses a random Fleemco product, which confirms that Fleemco does have other services besides the wild one of switching out people at will. What is doesn't everyone just have and use this technology then though? It just seems too big for everyone to not know about this thing and going further to, to use it? Well, there is a reason for that, thanks for asking. When calling in a replacement, Todd and Riley normally video call Conrad Fleem, the mysterious owner of Fleem Co. with a great mustache. Conrad's face isn't shown to the audience until the final episode of the series titled Irreplaceable. So going forward to explain all this, it will be considered heavy spoilers, so if you'd want to not be spoiled, you can skip to the timestamp on the screen. In in Irreplaceable, Todd and Riley learn that Conrad Fleem is actually their red-haired biological uncle who had been wearing a disguise the entire time so they wouldn't recognize him on the video calls. After this revelation, Conrad explains that he has created this company so that his niece and nephew would have the help they need in life while also learning important life lessons, preventing them from turning out like their careless father, Conrad's brother. He also explains that he didn't adopt Riley and Todd himself because, at the time, he was nervous that he would wouldn't know how to raise kids. The episode, and thus the series, ends with Conrad, Riley, and Todd deciding to have a closer relationship moving forward, with Conrad going as so far as to invite his niece and nephew to co-run the Fleem Co. replacement program so they can help out other kids that were once in a similar situation as their own. No particular reason has been credited as to why the show ended, and mixed reviews, low ratings, all of the above can be pointed out as possible reasons, but at least the show ended in a proper way that finished telling the story they wanted to tell 
well. This isn't always a commonplace thing, so it's at least satisfying to get some answers regarding interesting questions from the series and get an ending worthy of what the show was offering. I personally really like the aspect and dynamics of Todd and Riley's sibling relationship. Sure, they have all the tropes that siblings and media do. They don't see eye to eye a lot, they get on each other's nerves, have opposing ideas and views, but at the end of the day, they still care for each other and always look out for one another, especially because of their origins only having each other. The concept of the show, while as cool as it is, and in most cases works really well in the same vein as Fairly Odd Parents where Timmy can make a wish and learn a lesson based upon the wish not being what he thought it originally was that he wanted, it can be a bit played out when you know what to expect nearly to a T every episode. Some person is not to their liking, they get replaced. Someone is being mean, they get replaced. At least the title of the show fits really well. The parental dynamics of Agent K and Dick Daring can fall into a nice heartwarming category at moments that feel genuinely sweet to see. Other times it feels like they aren't fit to be replacement parents because of the lives that they already live beyond the household. It's very give and take here in the show that tries to balance out cool ideas and cool characters with plots that don't feel too much different from one another. In no way do I I think this is a bad show. Again, I had a lot of fun with it and I do like the characters and how they all interact. Plus, the ending of the show leaves a solid impact on everything that came before to fulfill your soul. It's just missing something on top of it to make it more memorable. Something worth going back to over and over again. But knowing exactly what to expect every episode can put a hindrance on doing so. It was a fun and pretty easy watch through. But to get to that great ending again, even though I do enjoy the characters, feels like a taller order than it should be. Better call Fleemco. But what I want to know is your opinion on the replacements. What do you think? about the show? Should it have continued on or did it wrap up in a nice way that felt satisfying? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter or else I'll replace you with someone who will. I'll be back soon with a new video, but until then, later.